To get your Thanksgiving meal on the table takes a lot of work, but are you really following the right recipe? I know a lot of people will say, well, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, they all did these things. Just because no one has gotten sick to this point, we don't want to make this the first time. Bibb County's Family and Consumer Sciences agent for the University of Georgia's Cooperative Extension Service, Keyshawn Thomas, says small steps make a tremendous difference when it comes to food safety. So we want to kind of follow four steps, kind of like the, the pillars of food safety, if you will. The first step, start off clean. So starting off clean means that you start off with clean food contact surfaces. All of our counters, and our cutting boards, our sinks, for instance, we want to make sure that those are clean. Like the roaster that's kind of out in the garage, make sure you start off with it clean. Make sure that you wash it out with soapy water, you let it dry, you dry it, and you make sure you get it. Because sometimes it'll get a little thin residue just sitting in the cabinet. We want to make sure we wash our produce and get rid of any residue. Sometimes you'll find little bugs or something like that. It's not extra protein, so we want to make sure that we clean all of our produce under warm water. Hands. Our hands are the vehicle for germs and they can get you really sick really quickly. So we want to make sure that we wash our hands for at least 20 seconds with warm water as well as soap. We want to get in between the webbing of our fingers and under those nails, ladies. If you're ill, then you do not need to be preparing food. It's someone else's turn. If you have fever, if you have any kind of uh, vomiting, diarrhea, then you do not need to be preparing food. Second step, separate. We want to separate our proteins from our ready to eat food. So say for instance, you bake, like I baked the night before or a day or two before. So if I store those pies in the refrigerator, I want to make sure that I store those pies above our proteins. We don't want the turkey juice on our pies. That's a no, what, that's a no, no, that could get us really sick really easy. We want to make sure that we keep them separate when we are transporting them from the store. Sometimes you may get a bagger that's not knowledgeable, but you want to keep those proteins separate from those ready to eat foods. Third step, cook. First thing with cooking is we want to thaw properly. There are only a few ways to thaw properly. I know that our grandparents probably just took the turkey out and tossed it in the sink at night, but that is a way for pathogens to grow really quickly and pathogens are what make us very ill so the proper way to thaw is to start a little bit early you may have to start two or three days early take the turkey out on monday put it in the refrigerator that's a great way to thaw if you are also going to thaw say for instance you're like me you're a little busy working i forgot to take the turkey out so you want to if you want to put it in the sink you can run it under water but you have to change that water out every 20 minutes also, the last way is the microwave. If you thaw in the microwave, it needs to be cooked immediately. You want to make sure you cook to the correct internal temperature. And it's a little tougher because we don't cook like the larger turkeys all the time. But that temperature is 165. So that involves using a thermometer. If you use a thermometer, you want to make sure that you check it at the thickest part of the bird. And that's generally the breast. And you also want to check it in another spot. So two spots to make sure that you have the correct internal temperature. For the vegetables, we do want to make sure that they are done. Fourth step, chill. Sometimes we want to leave the food out once it's cooked. We want to leave the food out all day. Cooked food should be chilled immediately. And there are some things that lend themselves to kind of spoil it really quickly. And those are like rice and potatoes and sprouts are plant-based foods. You have about a two-hour window before those pathogens start to grow exponentially. Thomas says following these safety rules when cooking your holiday feast or any meal for that matter helps keep foodborne illnesses away. On the farm, I'm Greg Lloyd.